Britain. We don't need... We don't need to go down the agenda set by Benefit Street and others. We need, I think, to take a moral principle. And that moral principle is quite simply this. If a society can provide health and education for all, it can also provide housing for all, it can also ensure we have a social security system that gives real security. So I want any future government's success or otherwise to be measured by all the normal economic indices that are there, but I also want it to be measured by the levels of poverty that's reducing, the number of children that are no longer going hungry, the number of people that are no longer sleeping on the streets, the number of people that are able to live and contribute normally within our society. Surely we're an inclusive society and these things are possible. Now, that is achieved by two things, and Alex is getting concerned about the time. He's always concerned about the time. It's something that concerns Alex a great deal. <laughs> He's a man of much concern. Uh, two areas I just want to briefly mention, because I think they're very important. The first is education and the education system as a whole. The numbers of children that access preschool education ought to be every child has the option of a free place in preschool education. It shouldn't be a lottery, it shouldn't be based on income, it should be based on the needs of the child and children's socialisation before they get to school is something that's very important. The children's centres, sure start, we're a great step forward, it's tragic the way they're being destroyed at the moment, but can't we provide something decent for all our children? But the Tories have um, other ideas, and the other ideas uh, later on in the school uh, age are to turn primary and secondary schools into academies, and any council that wants to open a free school can do so. Any council that wants to open a normal state community comprehensive, forget it, there's no money available for it. I don't want to close any schools, I want to keep schools open. But I do want to strengthen the whole concept of the local education authority, the family of schools, and bring those academies and free schools back into the normal local authority system. And while we're on with it, and I know it sounds very extreme and very far-fetched, but to insist that every teacher in a free school is actually qualified to teach it seems, to me, it seems to me quite a good idea. Um, but the teachers have been denigrated by this government and sadly occasionally by people in my own party in the same way that medical professions are being denigrated now merely because they've raised concerns about the idea of seven day working without the necessary new staff recruitment and changes that can make that a reality. But there is another issue and that is the way in which working class youngsters get a chance to go to college and go to university. The cancellation of educational maintenance allowance means that many young people simply don't want to stay on at school because they can't afford to and therefore miss out on A-levels, miss out on the chance of going to university. Those that do go to university, and I was talking to a young man today who just graduated, we were at a rally in Preston, and um, I congratulated him on his degree, said well done, hope things go well for you, and he was very pleased with the degree he got, and he deserves those congratulations. A great achievement. And I said, what's for you now? He said, um, £52,000 worth of debt. £52,000 worth of debt. Because he worked hard, got his A-levels, worked hard, went to university, worked hard, got a degree, and he's now got that level of debt. Well, I voted against the introduction of fees in the first place. I voted against it when it was, um, when it was put up to 3,000, I voted against it when it was put up to 9,000 and I think we have to look at ourselves and say what kind of society are we in when we penalise people for being educated? Because if somebody is a good engineer, somebody is a good lawyer, somebody is a good doctor, a good surveyor, all the other things that are so important, we all benefit. If it's a good doctor, we benefit. 
you know that you know that you know the reality. Education is not just for the individual. Education is for the society as a whole. And when people say we can't we can't afford it, we've done some looking at figures. We don't exactly know what the situation is going to be like by 2020. But by the calculations that we've worked out, we've got a good team of people doing it. Uh, we could raise the corporation tax instead of cutting it by two percent, raise it by 0.5 percent would be enough income to pay for the fees of all students in university. That to me is absolutely a price worth paying. Other countries manage to do it because they value that education. But while we're on with it, let's have an attitude towards education which is about the value of learning. I'm shocked by the way in which adult education is being cut back. Opportunities cut back for people with learning difficulties, people with mental health conditions, and so many other things. Education isn't just for qualifications for work, it's also for the benefit of society as a whole. Maybe there are some people that don't like us to be too well educated, don't like us to be thinking too much, don't like us to understand our history and where we've come from. The last point I'll make is this, because it's a hot evening and I want us to be able to um, listen to each other and talk to each other a bit as well, is the issues of environment and peace and justice around the world. We cannot go on as a planet consuming raw materials at the rate we are, polluting the sea at the rate we do, destroying the atmosphere at the rate we are, and by strong environmental regulations on both sides of the Atlantic, more this side than that, it must be said, um, exporting pollution to the cities of India and China. Because when air pollution becomes air pollution, be it nitrous oxide, sulfur dioxide, or anything else, it doesn't stop at national borders. It's very disrespectful of national frontiers, these winds are, as the seas are as well. If we pollute anywhere, we pollute everywhere. If we destroy here, we destroy there and everywhere else. So I think environmental policies are as much an attitude of mind about how we consume, what we consume and how much we consume, but also using our brains and our technology for sustainable generation of clean power and electricity. This, this, city, this city led the way in clean water in the 19th century when Liverpool Corporation built Lake Verney, the pipes and the dam that went with it and showed what municipal enterprise could achieve. Why can't that same municipal enterprise be used to generate sustainable sources of electricity and develop things in that way? There is much that we have to achieve in those areas. 